so uh, good morning uh, welcome to the daily development discussion session the first topic is an economic topic and we have another person against evergreening of loans very new concept but rv governor person against evergreening of loans so the concept is evergreening of loans the rv governor tikandas raised red flags over bank adopting innovative method for evergreening of loans covering of the real status of stressed loans of corporates to project an artificial clean image in uh, caught with corporates however bankers differ saying that sometimes it is practical to extend liquidity support to company that is facing genuine financial issue what is the issue due to supervision of banks are we notice certain instances wherein bank were using innovative way to conceal the real status of stressed loans such method include bridging two lenders together to evergreen each other's loan by sale and buyback of loan or debt instruments good borrowers being persuaded to enter into structured deals with a stress borrower to conceal the stress use of internal or office accounts to adjust borrower's repayment obligations renewal of loan or disbursement of new additional loans to the stress borrowers or related entities closer to the repayment date of the earlier loans the argument has come across cases where one method of evergreening after being pointed out by the regulator was replaced by another method Okay, regulatory here is RBA. When evergreening means one for your deal, it becomes stress asset. But the banker at the bank's point, so they try to innovate a new method by which the old loan is renewed by sanctioning another big loan and to making the payment of the bad loan out of that, or as the method so. So good borrower being persuaded to enter into structural deals with the stress borrowers. to conceal the stress use of internal or office account to adjust borrowers repayment obligation renewal of loan okay bridging two lenders together these are the innovative methods adopted by the banks themselves to conceal the stress asset or the stress borrowers this is called as evergreening and the banks at their point of view are in you know, finding or discovering new innovative methods of evergreening so when rbi uh, put restrictions on one type of evergreening so the bankers find way out to do this thereby they are able to clean their balance sheet and maintain their status as very less stress assets with them the existence of any such willful and significant evergreening suggests that the board ceo and the audit committee are not adequately vigilant okay so the ceo of the bank or the audit committee of the bank they are not uh, means uh, Uh, that that uh, is not adequately vigilant on this issue that give the scope to the bank branch branch manager or the officials in the region of the zone to do such practices but do evergreening of loan means the process of evergreening of loans a form of uh, zombie lending is typically a temporary fix for bank if an account turn into a non performing asset bank are required to make higher provisions which will impact their profitability okay a loan turn into a non performing asset or npa in the interest or installment remain unpaid even after the due date and remain unpaid for a period of more than 90 days what is npa non performing asset is a bad loan which remain due on interest or installment or principal for more than 90 days okay earlier it was 180 days but right now it has reduced to 90 days 
if the uh, installment remained due for more than 90 days or the interest remained due for more than 90 days okay so that is called NPA so to avoid classify, classifying loan as NPA bank adopt the abrogating loans in the past many bank has indulged in addressing of bad loans and giving additional funds to company who do not have the capacity to repay bank delay the recognition of losses due to loan defaults and engage in evergreening which is essentially the rolling over of debt of unviable borrowers that would have otherwise defaulted. This is purely misgovernance so that bad loans are made to look, uh, look good many times by additional lending to troubled borrowers. Okay, what happened here? Banks delay the recognition of losses due to loan defaults and engage in evergreening which is essentially the rolling out of debt of unviable borrowers that could have otherwise defaulted. This is purely misgovernance of the bank so that bad loans are made to look good many times by additional lending to troubled borrowers. What? By additional lending to additional lending to the troubled borrowers. This is called evergreening in bank terminology. Some banks have even extended such loan to willful defaulters to keep them out of the Defaulters book. When then RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan ordered an asset equality review in 2014, a host of concealed bad loans or NPA surfaced. Poor project appraisal management by the banks, especially publishers of banks, and some shady promoters who were known for the fund diversion joined hands to evergreen loans. Okay, that is the issue. When do bank evergreen loans, there is sufficient evidence, uh, incidental. Uh, Okay, and otherwise that structuring is often used by banks for evergreening. Problem accounts to keep the repo, uh, reported NPA level low. Corporate were allowed to opt for the liberal restructuring route between 2000 and 2014 when a host of companies used press loan from banks to evergreen their loan books. However, with the enactment of the uh, bankruptcy code, Evergreening has declined, but recovery has remained abysmally low. Although evergreen, uh, evergreening has been reduced to some extent, but so this uh, recovery of the bad loans remains abysmally low. RBI governor's latest warning indicates that evergreening is still going on, implying that all is not hunky dory in the banking system. That means normal. So it normally happens due to the unholy relationship between bankers and the borrowers. An accommodative monetary policy creates an enabling environment for weak bank to evergreen loans to zombie and keep them alive. Okay, this, this is what happened. Okay, the RBI has been following an accommodative policy since March 2020 when the pandemic struck the country. Most of the evergreening has happened in public sector banks which substantially led to a jump in NP. The CBI has uh, detected several cases of fraud, fund diversion by promoters of company from uh, loan advances again and again by banks in the last couple of years. Okay, what do bankers say? Okay, what do bankers say? Bankers said that it is difficult for bank to indulge in evergreening of loans and the RBI monitor each and every loan on a regular basis. This could be an interpretation uh, uh, issue also. What the RBI think as postponement of NPA by evergreening could be a real case of bank trying to save a borrower from becoming NPA by extending temporary liquidity, the bank said. According to the private sector lender, if temporary funding can help a borrower from becoming NPA, it is good for bank also, he said, adding, by calling somebody an NPA, you are just giving a dog a bad name and hanging it. Once an account is classified as NPA, the situation will become worse for me. So before this become an NPA, so some liquidity is given so to make it uh, come back on the right track. This is the normal method adopted by the banks for its own customers.
because ultimately RBI never maintain the customer base. The banks who maintain the customer base, and they don't want to make their customer come on the that uh, that that category of NPA customers. Put the Jumbai uh, crowd uh, out good borrowers. There are evidence of uh, indirect evergreening in India. Weak firms increase leverage by borrowing through release. Related parties come with banks, but a decrease real investment, which often goes undetected. Such resource uh, misallocation supports the crowding out effect ascribed to Zombie, according to an RBI paper on Zombie and the process of creating destruction. Results in uh, credit be diverted to weak entities, which is ultimately diverted for other purposes, or it become a uh, bad loan. Depriving the genuine credit needs of good borrowers. Are loan write up another means of evergreening? Loan written off by the bank are uh, removed from the NPA book. However, these loans continue as NPA in another form. The mega write up exercise has enabled banks to reduce their non performing assets or defaulted loans by around uh, 10 lakhs 9,501 crore. Okay. So, uh, 123.86 billion dollar in the last five years, according to data furnished by the Reserve Bank of India. In this reply to the right to information RPI, RPI, RPI query. Okay. So, ed, uh, added by this huge write up, the banking sector reported a decline in gross NPA to the rupees 2.7, uh, 7.29 lakh crore or 5.9 percent of the total advances because so the government and the bank has given a good write up. To the defaulters because such uh, write ups have been provided to the banks so that uh, reflected in reduction in the NPA level. So, uh, loan written up by the banks are removed from the NPA book. However, so this, this is what added by this huge write up, the bank sector reported a decline in gross NPA to 7.29 lakh crore or 5.9% of the total advances as of March 2022 and 5.5 lakh crore in March 2023. Gross NPA were 11.2% uh, in 2017 2018. So, that means the gross NPA of the banks are also on a falling trend after a huge write up. Declared by the government. Okay. Can how can evergreening be stopped? Uh, whether significant evergreening in a bank is detected by the RBI, penalty should be levied through cancellation of uh, unvested stock option and clawback of monetary bonus or uh, officers concerned and on all board time directors. And the chairman of the audit committee be asked to step down from the board. Send the committee to review governance of board of banks in India. Headed by the PJ Nayak. The primary defense against evergreening must have come from the CEO, the audit committee, and the board. The audit committee, in particular, need to be particularly vigilant. If significant evergreening is detected by the RBI supervisors, 
it was mean that evergreening you will pull with support from sections of the senior management of the bank then it, it then became necessary to levy penalties and action against the erring officials because here the banks enter into risk and that risk is due to the unholy nexus of some top officials of the particular bank so they should be taxed for this the next topic is alternative to upi naft rtgs the rbi plan light weight payment system for emergencies the rbi has conceptualized a light weight payment and settlement system which it is calling as the bonker equivalent of digital payment which can be operated from anywhere by a bare minimum staff in exigency such as natural calamity or war the infrastructure for this system will be independent of the technology that underlies the existing system of payment such as upi naft and rtgs the central bank has not offered a timeline for the launch of this payment system yet why is such a lightweight payment system needed in its annual report for 2022-23 published on tuesday uh, 30th may rbi said that the lightweight uh, and portable payment system is expected to operate on minimalistic hardware and software and would be made active only on a need basis such a lightweight and portable system payment system to ensure near zero down uh, time of payment and settlement system in the country and keep the liquidity pipeline of the economy alive and intact by facilitating uninterrupted functioning of essential payment services like bulk payment interbank payment and provision of cash to participant institutions the system is expected to process uh, transactions that are critical to ensure the stability of the economy including government and market related transactions having such a resilient system is also likely to act as a bunker equivalent in payment system and thereby enhance public confidence in digital payment and financial market infrastructure even during extreme conditions how will the uh, lightweight system be different from the upi the rbi has said that there are multiple payment systems available in the country for use by individuals as well as institutions each of which has its distinct character and application according to rbi existing conventional payment systems such as rtgs naft and upi are designed to handle large volume of transactions while ensuring sustained availability as a result they are dependent on complex wet network backed by advanced it infrastructure okay okay however catastrophic event like natural calamity and war have the potential to render this payment system okay temporarily unavailable by disrupting and underlying information and communication infrastructure so therefore it is prudent to be prepared to face such extreme and volatile situations because so anything can happen at any time and we must be ready to face it so technology so making the system fully technology uh, based and only one technology based uh, increase the risk potentiality that is why so they are uh, devising so bankers are devising new methods Okay, so the RBI has said that there are multiple payment system available in the country for use by the individual. Okay, so such extreme situation, so like war, natural calamity, or any other exigency, need separate system. Okay, 
why this then the next topic is the global issue why is the us shifting its approach to china from decoupling to de-risking okay so uh, there is uh, in india that, that is america china uh, trade war and this trade war has led to a new concept called de-risking from decoupling to de-risking the trump era focus on us to decouple from china is being phased out by a new concept the us has expressed that it is shifting its policy on china from decoupling to de-risking the eu has already declared that its approach to china will be based on de-risking the recently concluded g7 summit at hiroshima japan though its leader kamnik has also expressed the grouping consists on consensus of de-risking from china so what is this de-risking after the establishment of the diplomatic tie between us and china in 1979 Both the countries embarked on a path of increased economic interdependence. China gained immensely from this relationship, as it helped as it helped the country drastically widen and deepen its diplomatic and economic engagement with the rest of the world. As China's economic and military power grew, its ambition to challenge the primacy of USA in the international system became increasingly apparent. China's rise not only came at the expense of the American global clout, but also the latest domestic industry which got hollowed out in uh, its uh, four decade old economic embrace with china because so chinese closeness with america led to rapid economic growth in china and especially industrialization manufacturing and export of china grew manifold due to its close interaction with china and us uh, so china get more benefit than us say okay in this particular matter so as china immensely benefited so uh, usa feel that its own association has resulted in chinese gaining importance and that is what so usa has and uh, along with all european uh, countries okay they are trying to so change the approach towards china and this is why so the uh, issue of the risking or decoupling has been launched okay by the time donald trump took over the reins of power in usa dealing with the techno economic challenge from china became a matter of urgency the trump administration made it point to attack the uh, uh, government bilateral trade imbalance in favor of china it also wished to keep the us high technology sector out of china's reach in a series of moves trump raised tariff on chinese imports which invited retaliatory tariff from china the us china trade war started and uh, bilateral relations were set on course for a, a decoupling from the american standpoint this approach was marked by a rare sense of bipartisanship in an otherwise polarized uh, domestic political climate in the us therefore the biden administration which took over from the trump administration continued with the latter china policy of the Coupling. However, over times, the Biden administration added its own features into the China policy in her term term. Most recently, the level of decoupling has been changed to de-risking. According to the U.S. National Security Advisor Jack Sullivan, de-risking fundamentally means having a resilient, effective supply chain and ensuring we cannot be subjected to the coercion of any other country. while uh, decoupling stands for an eventual reversal of the four decade old project to uh, enmesh the two economies de-risking aims to limit such an effect only in area where it undercuts the national security and industrial com- com- competence of the us this shift has been articulated by the biden administration in two recent landmark speeches by the treasury secretary jayant allen uh, janet allen Uh, on the us china economic relationship at the john hopkins school of advanced international studies on 20th april followed by that of uh, jack uh, sullivan on uh, renewing american economic leadership at the broking institutions on april 27 recent legislation in the us such as the bipartisan infrastructure law the chips and science act chips and science act and as well as the inflation reduction act have been subsumed under the new approach The U.S. geoeconomic initiative, like the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment, as well as the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity, are also supposed to reflect the spirit of de-risking. Okay, why de-risking? Uh, 
in order to understand the rationale behind us shift from decoupling to de-risking it is important to comprehend the timing of the move the policy change has been announced in the wake of several events of high geopolitical significance the world has just emerged out of the tentacle of pandemic after three disruptive years and the global economy hoping for a resulting rebound the us china rivalry has peaked in the past few months from the uh, ratchet of tension across the taiwan strait to the acrimonious spy balloon episode between the two countries china also witnessed uh, jinping uh, becoming his second decades of rule over china in an un- unprecedented third term as the general secretary of the communist party of china chairman of the central military commission and president of the chinese uh, republic of china ever since the dawn of the reform era in parallel a year had passed since russia began its special military operation in ukraine with the conflict going on without any end in sight and mr uh, jinping after starting his third consecutive leadership term made his first foreign visit to russia where he proposed a peace plan he had also in his third leadership tenure extended his peacemaking diplomacy to west asia striking gold in normalizing the fred saudi iraq relationship all of the development have necessitated the us to recalibrate its posture towards china in such a situation casting the us china relation as a new cold war and a zero sum game appears to be risky for the us bringing more uh, nuance into its earlier decoupling approach could bring down chinese guard and give the us more room to reconsolidate its strength Perhaps the Russia-Ukraine conflict could have played a pivotal role in enabling the U.S. policy shift towards China. The Biden administration, unlike its predecessor, had made it a point to reassure its European allies at a time when China has been backing Russia in its shadow battle in Ukraine against the West. The idea of decoupling had it appeals to the European Union. The European Union has, in fact, been looking to. Oh, China! In order to convince it to stop uh, supporting Russia for uh, striking Western sanctions, okay. In this context, a watered-down version in the form of de-risking could better achieve the objective of getting Europe on the board. The U.S. effort to counter China, okay. It is therefore no surprise that the U.S. recent articulation of its de-risking approach repeatedly draws reference to the. European Commission President uh, Ursula von der Leyen's milestone speech in the EU-China relations to the uh, Mer- uh, Mercator Institute of China study uh, and the European Policy Center on March 30th. In her speech, Mrs. von der Leyen stressed that the European Union strategy to China should be based on de-risking. So, European Union also started talking about de-risking earlier. Joining her. So uh, this was a procedure uh, to her visit to China in April, along with the French President Emmanuel Macron, with the Russia-Ukraine war as the main agenda. In fact, China policy of the U.S. and the European Union has been uh, witnessing a significant convergence of late recent developments. May have also triggered the transatlantic consensus on de-risking vis-à-vis China. Fine. So what could be the geopolitical ramifications of the de-risking? The U.S. effort to keep its allies closer in its geopolitical rivalry against China 
by adopting the path of de-risking has already won a significant victory in Japan at the G7 summit. The leader at the summit declared that they will coordinate their approach to economic resilience and economic security that is based on diversifying and defending partnership and de-risking and not decoupling. China has expressed its uh, skepticism to the West de-risking approach, portraying it as a facet to the decoupling agenda. Moreover, China has expressed its disapproval in uh, painting China as an uh, actor responsible for attaining geopolitical risk. According to China, the real source of risk in the USA, which is which alleged to have created instability across the world by pursuing political and military interventions and uh, perpetuating a cold war mindset. The continuing emphasis in de-risking to diversify supply chain away from China's demonstrate that the Trump era spirit of decoupling is being carried out forward albeit with some changes. This could also make the Western move to counter China's rise much more substantially by facilitating a unified front among alliances. I'll call it back. Okay. So uh, that is the uh, the continuing emphasis on the risky diversify such supply chain from China. Okay.
Okay, so the continuing emphasis in de-risking to avoid supply chain away from China demonstrate that the Trump era spirit of decoupling is being carried forward. Albeit with some changes, this will also make the West move to counter China, reach much more substantial, sustainable by facilitating a united front among allies. However, its effectiveness would be questionable. As uh, it has dialed down U.S. rhetoric against China, which could be read by the letters as a sign of its adversary weakness. Though countries like India will stand to benefit from de-risking by leveraging its benefit, like attracting uh, supply chain and converting China's aggressive move, it could also come at a cost to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Okay. Uh, okay, a uh, conflict uh, and the consolidation of the European alliance being the major trigger behind this shift. De risking could lead to US focus on the Indo Pacific being diluted at least for the short term because the Chinese influence in this region need to be uh, diluted. Okay, and that is what is the focus of this approach on this de risking of the. Uh, this de-risking policy uh, uh, adopted by uh, uh, USA on on China, okay, in the recent time. Fine. Then uh, next the Shenzhou uh, uh, spacecraft. Okay, what this is? So China launched a spacecraft carrying three astronauts, including the first its first civilian, to its Tiang space uh, Tiangong space station on 30th May. This is the country's fifth manned mission to a fully functional space station since 2021. The spacecraft, the Shenzhou 16, uh, was launched atop a long march F, uh, to a rocket from the uh, Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Okay. The spacecraft was launched atop a long march, uh, march to a rocket to the uh, Jiquan satellite launch center in the Gobi Desert in in, uh, in uh, northwest China. The crew of the uh, Shenzhou 16 includes Jiang Haipeng, uh, the leading commander of the mission, as well as Zhu Hangzhou and Bui Haichao, the first Chinese civilian to travel to space so far. The Asian country has also been sending astronauts to them from its, its, uh, uh, from its People's Liberation Army, okay, PLA. The three astronauts The uh, three astronauts will replace the crew uh, of uh, Shenzhou 15 abroad the Tiang space station who have been there since November last year. The new crew will stay there for the next five months and will carry out large scale in orbit tests and experiment in various
about the Tiang Space Station operated by China's manned space agency. The Tiang Space Station was built by China after the USA banned NASA from working with the ASEAN country. Citing a high risk espionage, the permanently named space station's first module entered into orbit in 2021 and two more modules were added to it in the following years. The Tiang Space Station is expected to become the sole uh, in orbit outpost for seismic research after the end of the operation of the Indian Space Station in 2030. It's China's ambitious project to achieve its best dream. Okay, so without the support of the international community. Then the mission uh, Garhak, the Uttar Pradesh Police and uh, Amazon India are coming together to tackle the finance of online shopping scam with a consumer education awareness campaign named the Mission Garhak. The collaboration will explore several joint initiatives aimed at empowering consumers to shop online with greater confidence. UP Police and Amazon India to join force to educate online consumers about their right as well as right awareness about safe shopping practices and protecting online shoppers from bad actors. Egypt two largest uh, uh, emblemic laboratory ever discovered. So Egypt continued to un uh, unveil the secret of the ancient history and probably never will at uh, Sakura, the Nacropolis 30 km south of Cairo, two of the largest emblemic laboratory ever to come to light have the fact even been discovered. In addition to these two sites, which in itself could make a discovery sensational, two uh, scarophagic uh, one belonging to the old kingdom about uh, 2400 BC and one to the new kingdom 1300 BC have also uh, returned to the surface. The region of Sarka where everything was found is one of the largest royal necropolis in Egypt and home to the oldest stone building in history, the uh, step pyramid of the Joseph. Okay. Then the next topic is the SCO summit, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization the summit. Uh, India will hold the 22nd summit of the SCO from the first time under its chairmanship in a vital formula on 4th July. Heads of the state of all member countries including Russia, China, Pakistan have been invited to the summit. Why? Earlier, supposed to be an in-person event, the event uh, will be held on July 4th and will be chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In addition to the members' countries such as China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, India has invited Iran, Belarus and Mongolia as observers, observer states. Okay. Whom India has invited? India has invited Iran, Belarus and Mongolia. As per the SCO tradition, Turkmenistan has also been invited as a guest of the chair. Uh, heads of the two SCO bodies, the Secretary Head and the SCO Rats Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure will also be present. Head of stick internal, uh, international and regional organizations like UN, ASEAN, CIS, Company India, uh, that, uh, that independent states, the CSTO, AAEU and CICA have also been invited. India has named this upcoming summit towards a secure SCO. Secure, an acronym coined by Prime Minister Modi at the 2018 SCO summit stands for Security, Economy and Trade, Connectivity, Unity, Respect for Sovereignty and Territorial Integrity and Environment in the region. As the chair, India has set up new pillars of cooperation within the bloc, such as the startup and innovation, traditional medicine, digital inclusion, youth empowerment, and shared Buddhist heritage. It added that India has worked towards fostering greater people to people ties that celebrate the historical and civilizational bond between the nations. Like the various socio cultural events hosted by the Varanasi. Uh, under the framework of the first SEO cultural and tourist uh, capital uh, for 2022-23. About SEO, it is a permanent intergovernmental international organization which was created in 2001. SEO charter was signed in 2002 and entered force in 2003. It is a Eurasian political, economic and military organization aimed to maintain peace, security and stability in the region. It is seen as a counterweight to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization it is a nine-member economic and security bloc and has emerged as one of the strong, largest trans-regional international inter organization. Official language, Russian and Chinese. Uh, permanent bodies, SCO Secretariat in Beijing and Executive Committee of the Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure in Tashkent. India and Pakistan became members in 2017. Iran is set to become a permanent member of the SCO in 2023. Then the SPG. So we have covered this uh, about this in the previous class. Okay, coming to the 
question examine the impact of the recent ban on diesel vehicle in india also suggest some alternative solution to address the issue of emission from the transport sector the energy transition advisory committee formed by the minister of petroleum and natural gas has recommended a ban on the use of diesel powered four wheeler vehicles by 2027 in cities with population of more than 1 million and instead transition to electric and gas fuel vehicles this ban on diesel vehicles will impact india both positively and negatively in the following ways positive impact reduction in air pollution caused due to emission of high level of particular matter and nitrogen is oxide from diesel vehicles for example out of the ban on diesel vehicles that were over 10 years old in delhi in 2015 air pollution level in the city was increased by 25% promotion of clean energy vehicle it can encourage the adoption of electric and hybrid car which emit fewer pollutants and greenhouse gas also after the launch of this fame india scheme in 2015 the sale of electric vehicle in india has increased significantly improved public health the reduction in air pollution level can lead to a significant improvement in public health outcomes such as reduction in respiratory illness heart disease and premature death reduced dependence on foreign oil india is heavily dependent on foreign oil import which can have a significant impact on the country's energy security and balance of payment negative impacts economic impact the automobile industry is a significant contributor to india's gdp employing millions of people directly and indirectly the ban can lead to a decline in the demand for diesel car resulting in a significant loss of revenue for the automobile manufacturers and dealers for example when the national green tribunal banned diesel vehicles that were over 10 years old in delhi in 2015 it led to a 30% drop in the sale of car makers such as the mahindra and the tata motors okay what green tribunal banned diesel vehicles sell okay that affected the sale of mahindra and tata job loss due to loss less demand of diesel vehicles for example the supreme court banned the issue of diesel vehicles with an engine capacity of 2000 cc and above in delhi in 2015 it led to a loss of over 2000 job in the automotive sector increased price of alternative vehicles the promotion of alternative vehicles such as electric and hybrid car can lead to increase in their price due to the high cost of production and low demand lack of infrastructure the lack of infrastructure to support use of electric vehicle in india can pose a significant challenge to the adoption of clean energy vehicle for example the number of electric vehicle charging stations in india is currently limited with only around 1000 charging stations across the country making it charging for electric vehicles owner to travel long distances the adverse effect of the ban on diesel vehicle in india can be mitigated by provide support to the automobile industry the government has announced a production link incentive uh, scheme for the automotive automobile sector which provide incentive for manufacturer to shift towards a clean energy vehicle promote the adoption of clean energy vehicle faster adoption and manufacturing uh, fem india scheme provide substitute subsidy for the purchase of electric and hybrid vehicles encourage the deployment of new technology the government has launched its national automotive testing and r&d infrastructure project which is aimed at developing state of the art testing facilities for the vehicles in india provide support to the transportation sector the smart city mission is aimed at developing sustainable tra- transportation infrastructure in urban areas for example the rapid regional rail transport system in delhi ncr this initiative can help ensure a smoother transition towards a more sustainable and environmentally friendly transportation sector in india alternative measure to tackle the issue of emission from the transport sector implement emission standards the government can mandate stricter emission standards for vehicle and also conduct regular check on to ensure compliance for example the bharat stage 6 uh, emission standards are implemented in india in 2020 which are expected to reduce uh, air pollution from vehicles encourage the use of bicycles the government can invest in infrastructure for cycling such as dedicated cycle lanes and also provide incentive for people to use bicycles for example smart city mission into the provision for deployment of cycling infrastructure in the urban areas then implement congestion pricing congestion pricing involves charging uh, drivers a fee for driving in congested area during peak hours for example london has implemented a congestion charge for drivers entering the city center during peak hours which has resulted in reduction of the traffic congestion in air pollution promote tele- telecommuting and remote work for example due to covid-19 pandemic many companies have implemented work from home policy 
which has resulted in reduction in the traffic congestion and air pollution. Promote uh, carpooling and uh, ride sharing. The government can provide incentive for carpooling and ride sharing, such as priority lanes on the road or reduced fuel. For example, in Bangalore, the government has launched a ride sharing initiative called the uh, Nama Pool, which provides incentive for carpooling. Implement urban planning strategy. The government can invest in the de uh, development of compact. Uh, workable city with a mixed use zoning which reduces the need for private vehicles for example the city of uh, uh, Kutiba in Brazil has implemented an urban planning strategy that includes a comprehensive public transportation system which has reduced the number of private vehicles on the road promote the use of clean fuel the government can provide incentive for the use of clean fuels and also invest in the uh, development of infrastructure for clean fuel. For example, the Delhi government has launched a pilot project to run buses on hydrogen and rich compressed natural gas which is expected to reduce air pollution from buses. Thus, it is imperative for the government to adopt a multi prong approach and consider all these alternatives while addressing the issue of air pollution. Fine. So, uh, this is the high time that the government should think about this. And uh, banning diesel vehicles uh, is a right step because to save humankind from the bad effect of pollution. Uh, so consider the following statement regarding evergreening of loans. Evergreening method includes using two lenders together to evergreen each other's loan by sale and buyback of the loan or debt. RBI permitted evergreening of loans to public sector banks. So here two is incorrect because RBI never permitted this only one is correct. Uh, consider the following statement company mission. Uh, Garhok. The campaign is a partnership between Uttar Pradesh Police and Amazon India. The objective is to campaign is to reduce uh, to educate online consumers about the right as well as raise awareness about the safe shopping practices and protecting online shoppers from bad actors. So both one and two are correct in this. Authority in US and Mexico recently appealed to the World Health Organization to declare a public health emergency over a fungal uh, meningitis outbreak. Consider the following treatment regarding the meningitis. Is inflammation of the protective membrane covering the brain and the spinal cord. Only viral infection can cause meningitis. Here, yeah, uh, so uh, only uh, one is correct, but two is incorrect. Uh, Senkaku Island. Okay, recently news. So it is. It is. It is uh, Senkaku Island. The conflict between China and India, the East China Sea. The conflict between uh, China and Japan, the Senkaku Island. So it is called the Diao Island in in in. in uh, Japan. Fine. Then the following statement about the Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO. The 2022 edition of the SCO summit hosted by Uzbekistan. That is uh, right. Okay. India is going to host the 22nd SCO summit in them with a secured SCO. Okay. So both one and two are correct for this. Then six. Sakhalin one project was in news. This line was in the following country. It is in Russia. So Sakhalin project by uh, OVN, OHC Business Limited, and the foreign arm of. Uh, ONGC is an oil and gas field in Russia. According to the report, in, uh, as many as 53% of organizations studied in India are victims of uh, spare uh, fishing in 2022. Uh, consider the following statement regarding the uh, spare fishing. It is a targeted attempt to steal sensitive information such as account, credentials, or financial information from a specific victim. This is uh, the most uh, successful form of acquiring confidential information. On the internet. So for this, so uh, both one and two are correct. PC. Which of the following statement are correct and refers to the Chandra and three? It will be lunch using PSLV. So uh, it is no JSLV will be used. The earlier mission used PSLV, but this will be JSLV. It is aimed at uh, demonstrating critical technology to land the spacecraft, the south pole of the moon. So two is correct because uh, so it will be it will, it will land a lander. Uh, uh, so an, an orbiter and a uh, lander and a rover. The rover will land it to the uh, lander in the south pole of moon. So two is correct. The term uh, Cinetobacter Bamal uh, Nil, sometimes seen in news, it is the superbug. Consider the following statement with the case three batch two submarine. It is a series of uh, uh, diesel uh, electric attack submarine that equipped with the air independent propulsion technology. The summary is built by South Korea. So all the three are correct. One, two, three. D is the right option. So keep on watching every day. So update yourself. The development going on around you.
Thank you for being with us.